Hello and welcome. My name is Bimi. I'm a work from home mom, financial consultant, forest trader and coach, and always a student. Today I'm going to be taking you on how to identify and follow the trend in forex trading. If you're a trader, you will be familiar with the term a trend is your friend. It's commonly used in the market. And what does this mean? What does it mean that the trend is your friend? This basically means that you should not fight the trend. You should go along with the trend. You should flow with the trend. You should trade the trend. As retail traders in the market, we do not have the opportunity of moving the direction of the market. What we trade is minimal compared to the big people in the market who have the power to move the market. So what do we want to do? We want to play along with them. We want to trade behind them. We want to know the, the position, the, the, the way they are moving the market. We want to know where they are trending the market toward, and we want to trade the same way. And that is why it is very important that as a trader, you should understand the trend in the market, whether the market is on an uptrend or on a downtrend. That's one of the first things you should always identify before you enter into any trade. Now, what is a trend? A trend is basically a general direction of the market. Whether the market is going up or the market is falling or the, the exchange rate is falling. Now, we have uptrend and we have downtrend. What is an uptrend? An uptrend is basically series of different higher highs and higher lows. And what do I mean by that? If you take a look at this diagram, you see this, that this price is moving from this point and it goes up here. So the exchange rate here is increasing generally. Although we see points where it comes back down a little, then it moves up and then it does a correction and moves up again. But generally this is moving up. And how do we know? We want to see series of higher highs and higher lows. And what do I mean by that? I mean that for every new high, it is higher than the initial one. So this point is higher than this eye. This eye up here is higher than this one. And then the lows too, this low here is higher than this one. This one here is higher than this one. So we have higher highs and higher lows. And that is why we say this market is on an uptrend. And what do you want to do in this situation? You want to look out for buy position. You want to buy rather than selling, because you do not want to fight the trend. Now let's look at a low trend, or a downtrend, sorry. Now in this situation, the market is moving down generally. The exchange rate is dropping, it's falling. It starts from this point, moves up here, and then the next high that we are going to see is lower than this one. This one is lower than this. So we have series of lower highs and series of lower lows. And that helps us identify that the market is trending downward and we are looking for sell opportunities. Now, for you to be able to make decision on a trend in the market, there are some vital points you need to consider. The first thing is you want to understand that trend is relative. What do I mean by that? If you look into the charts, there are times that you are going to notice that the trend on the daily time frame is totally different from what you see on maybe like the 15 minute time frame. Why is this so? There is usually difference in the trend on different time frame. So what is important is for you to know your type of trader and concentrate on the time frame that you're trading. So you want to focus on the trend on your own trading time frame. 
we have different type of traders in the market. We have position traders, we have swing traders, we have day traders, and we have scalpers. So are you a scalper? If you're a scalper and your focus is on maybe five minutes can do or 15 minutes can do, what do you want to do? You want to look out for the trend of the market on your own time frame. If you're a day trader and you're focused on one hour candle, or maybe you're a, 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 you're a swing trader and you're focused on four hour and daily time frame, what do you, how do you want to check your trend? You want to go to the daily time frame or the four hour time frame where you trade from and check the trend of the market there. This will help you to be focused on the time frame that you trade with and this will help you have more direction in the market. Let me show you what I mean by this on a live market. So this is Eurocard. This is Eurocard. And if you look at this, we are on 4 hour now, right? What do we see here? Do we call this uptrend or a downtrend? This is basically a downtrend in market. It comes from this point and look at where the price is right now. So this market is generally trending downward. Now let's look at this same market on 15 minutes time frame. Can we still say this market is trending downward? No, this is an hope trending market, whereas we are still checking the same euro card. So that shows that on 15 minutes time frame, the market is trending upward, and on four hour time frame, the market is trending downward. Let's look at Australian dollar and ZD, AUD and ZD. Now look at this 15 minute time frame. The market is doing what? It's trending upward. We have uptrending market. Now let's look at this same market on daily time frame. Can we still say this market is trending downward or upward? What we saw on 15 minutes time frame is upward trending, right? But here we have down trending market. So what do you want to do? What am I trying to bring out here? I want you to understand that you should focus on your own trading time frame because trend is relative. It is it, never the same on all time frame. You cannot check weekly, check daily, check for her, check one her, and see that you have the same trend in all of them. So what you want to do is you need to be focused on your own trading time frame. Now let's move on. The next one you want to take note of is market structure. You need to understand the market structure and follow the market structure in your trade. And what do I mean by that? Now, when I say market structure, I mean that there is accumulation stage and we have equilibrium stage. And what, what does that mean? Now, you are going to see something like this in the market. You are going to see the structure of the market showing something like this at some points. What is happening in this situation? We do not have a particular direction. This market is just going sideways. It's going sideways. So the market is not showing us whether it is uptrending or it's downtrending. And I, as a person, would not enter any trade here. What will I do? I'm going to wait. I'll wait for a breakout. So this point is what we call the accumulation stage. The market is accumulating, it's consolidating. Now, at some point, you're going to see something like this. You're going to see a breakout. It will break out of this place. It may decide to do some retests. It will retest where it broke out from, and then it goes up. And then you see a little bit of retest again, and then it moves up again. It goes up, moves down, move up. So what are we seeing here? 
now we can easily see that this market is an uptrend but at this point it was just consolidating so as long as you are not a scalper we just want to do five pips ten pips in the market it is not advisable to trade when the market is still consolidating this way so you want to wait for the direction of the market you want to see what the market truly wants to do so when it breaks out of this structure you now see that okay it's breaking out, out to the upside it can also sometimes break out to the downside so if it comes down this way and break out like this what do you want to do sometimes you wait for a retest it retests where it was it broke out from and then it starts going down what can we see here we see a downtrend forming we see downtrending market forming. Now, I, I mentioned that this place is called the accumulation stage. At that point is called what? The accumulation stage. Now, the market usually will get to a point where the sellers will come in or the buyers will come in. So let's assume that this market is uptrending. It broke out of here to the upside and it's going upside. Now this market is uptrending. It gets to a point where the sellers will come in. But before that happens, you will usually likely see something like this forming. So, this place is the equilibrium point. What you see here is like the equilibrium point. So what do you want to do? You want to wait for it. If it breaks out to the upside, you know you are still on uptrend in the market. If it breaks to the downside, then you're sure you're now on a downtrend in market. So let's assume at this point, it has been moving up, 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 and then the sellers are now saying, well, enough is enough this price needs to go down. This exchange rate needs to reduce. And so they enter into the market and there's a breakout for, from this zone to the downside. There's a little retest, another downside move to the downside, a little retest, another move to the downside. Now we can see clear direction of the market. Would you trade around here? Not advisable. What do you want to do? You want to wait for a break. And once it breaks out, you see the direction of the market. And at that point, you want to do a sell or a buy as uh, for, depending on what you see in the market. So let's see if we can see anything to explain this better in the market now. Sorry. So let's go to the live market and see if we can explain this better, taking a look at the market. So we have this portion here. So we have this part. If you look at this part, this is where I call the accumulation point. It was just going up, coming down. But at a point, it broke out of this part. Move all the way up, does a retest, move up again. There are little, little retests here and there. And then it goes to this point, does a retest again, and it still moves up. Then it begins to sh show uh, consolidation again around this point. And so this point is the accumulation, the, the equilibrium point. Now, when it breaks out of this zone, another zone is now formed here. Another zone is formed. So when it got to this high point, it got to this high point, comes back down here, and then we see something like this. We want to wait, and when it breaks out, what did we see? We see it pushing down so we are going to see things like this in the market it may not be so smooth like what i drew but the market will always show you that structure there are points that it will break from a zone and begin to push up and then it will get to a point where 
the sellers take over the market and then the market begins to push down. Now let's look at one other point. Another thing you want to take note of in the market is identification of the swing point and the lines of defense. And so what do I mean by the swing point and line of defense? Let's go back to what I just drew on the trading view and let me show you what I mean by the swing point and line of defense. So the swing points are usually these points. You see that the market moves up and then it swings back down a little, moves up in again, swings back down. So what are you able to do at this swing point? The market pushes back down like a retest to, and then you have an opportunity for you to now enter a trade at those points. So what do I mean? The market has pushed out of this area. You missed it. Do you want to jump in maybe around this period? No, just wait. This market is pushing back down to do a retest. At this point, you can move into the market and do your home buy. Then it goes up. Perhaps you missed this one too. And you are just noticing it around this point. What do you do? You want to wait for it to do this retest. And then you can come in around this swing point to move with the trend and enjoy the buy. Now, aside this swing point, we also have the defense point. And what is this defense point? This defense point is simply this area. This area. Now, there's something I call, I actually trade this. I have a strategy that I use in trading this structure in the market, and I call it the swipe pattern. Now, what I want to look out for is this kind of pattern that shows me something like this. And then will I come in anywhere around there? No. This pattern only becomes valid when it breaks out of this zone. So this is like a neckline for heat. This pattern, some people also call it head and shoulder pattern. So you see the first, the left shoulder, you see the head, you see the right shoulder. What do you want to do? You want to wait for heat to break out of this neckline. And this neckline is what I refer to as the defense line, the last defense line. So now when it breaks out of that place, it is only at that point point that you can change the direction of your trade in the market. So at this point you were doing buy. Now that the market has changed structure, what do you want to do? You now want to do a sell. But without it breaking this defense line, you should not do any sell. You continue to trade the trend. As long as the trend has not shown you clearly that there's a change, you continue trading the structure of the market. So that's basically what uh, I mean by the swing and the, the line that it has to be, the defense line that has to be broken. So what do you want to do here? You want to focus on the breakage of the last line of defense in order for you to identify when to switch from buying to selling or when to switch from selling to buying. Another thing I want you to take note of is that you should never try to force a trade. So there are situations where you will be in the market and the market is just going to be moving sideways. Should you jump into the market at that point? No, do not force a trade. So you look into the market, you try to identify what the trend is. You cannot see what, whether it's an uptrend or the downtrend. You cannot know, you, you can't identify where to enter the market, whether it is doing a retracement or it's still moving up, you are not able to identify it. Should you force yourself into that market? No. When you're unable to identify the trend or you can't determine the direction of the market for a particular currency pair, just move on. Rather than trying to lose the, your hard-earned money, your trading investment, you should rather leave that trade. There are so many currency pairs in the market, for God's sake. You can move on to another one, identify the, the things 
you want to check out your checklist, your trading checklist, do you have everything in place on this current new currency pair? If it's there, then do a buy or do a sell there rather than forcing yourself on a currency pair where you're unable to identify anything. So that's that for today. Thank you so much for joining me on this lesson for today. I hope you got value. Now, if you want to learn more tips like this on trading, join my Facebook community, The Money Sellers Forest Academy. You can search for it on Facebook, The Money Sellers. Money Sellers together, The Money Sellers Forest Academy. And if you want to go through a link, just go through link to help dot club for slash msfa and you can join me on ig instagram via this link link to hub.club for slash fxwgig my name on on ig is forex with bimi on facebook page forex with bimi and linkedin is forex with bimi but you can always reach me through these links on the screen thank you so much and please do have a great day